In this episode, we are going to create some filters so that we can filter our movies uh, based on genres and actors that are in it. Uh, for that, we are going to be using React Query and also we are going to be using React Select so that our select boxes look nice. Now, before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout to ConvaWorks. ConvaWorks is a WordPress plugin that gives you the, the ability to create and host voice assistant and chatbot services directly from your website. Uh, conversation logic is broken into workflow components, uh, which are fully managed through the graphic interface. It's something like building a website in a visual composer. It supports custom components and extensions so that you can add new functionalities from your plugin or a theme. Cornova works currently works with Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, Viber and Facebook Messenger. So if you guys are interested in something like this, please check them out. They are not paying me anything for this. This is made by the guys from Croatia. So I just wanted to give them a shout out and to spread the word about their product. So if you're interested in something like this, please check out Convo works. Just a little note before we begin. So I updated my Strepi uh, to be version 3.4.5. Also, I deleted all of the placeholder movies, uh, got real movies in here and I added some actors and some genres to it so that we have. So now we have these five movies, which we are going to be filtering throughout our application. And as I said at the beginning of this episode, we are going to be using React Query for that. And also we are going to be using, uh, so React Query is this, and we are going to be using React Select. Now React Query is a performant and powerful data synchronization for React, uh, which means that uh, you're going to use it to fetch the data and React Query is going to cache that data for you so that you don't have to uh, fetch it all the time. It's also going to give you status messages for that. Uh, and it has some pretty nice things for working with fetching data from the client side. We are of course not going to go too much into detail here. We are just going to use it for our filters. But if you want to know more about React Query, I suggest you check out this video series by the Net Ninja. Uh, he has a few episodes about React Query that are going to go into a bit more detail about React Query than what we are going to be doing in this episode. So if you want to know a little bit more about it, uh, check out those videos. And also, as I said, we are going to be using React Select, which is just going to create these nice select boxes for us in which we can pull single data, we can pull multiple data and so on. Okay, so let's first of all just install react query and uh, react select so you go to your console and you just do npm install react query and react select now once this is done we can go to our code editor and inside our app.js we are going to set up our query client provider and our query client you need to do that to use react query so you are going to import a, client, a query client provider and query client from React Query. Then we are going to define query client like this. So query client is equal to new query client. And next you need to wrap your components inside of query client provider. So you do query client provider around your components and you need to define a client which we defined right here so it's called query client so client is equal to query client and that's about it so now you have query client provider around your components and you can use react query okay so now that we did this let's create a new list of our movies, uh, which is just going to be a textual list so that we can see how our filters work a little bit better. Uh, that is going to be better than using uh, our site as it looks right now. So as you can see, uh, this doesn't look very good for filtering. So we are going to create a new route. And in that route, we are just going to list our movies. And then I'm going to show you how the filters work. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to create a new file inside of pages directory. So we go to pages and in pages, I'm going to create a new uh, page called filter movies. 
.js, of course. And in here, I'm just going to paste this in uh, because uh, I don't want to go through that. We already covered this a million times. So what we are doing is importing flex and box. Uh, we are returning a container. Uh, we have a title of filter movies. Filters are going to go here in this box right here. And in this box, I am mapping through the movies. I'm displaying a movie title, movie genre. So actually I first check if the movie genre exists. If it does, I want to show the title of that genre. Uh, and if it doesn't, I'm just going to show null. So this is, you need to do this if some of your movies don't have genres attached to them. If you don't do this, then your application is going to break. After that, we are going to go through the actors array and, and we are also checking if there is anything inside of that array. If it is, then we are going to map through the actors array and show the first and last name of the actors. And uh, here, at get server side props, we are just fetching the movies, just like we did on our index page. And we're sending those movies through props and receiving them here, right? So if I save this and go to the browser and go to the route called filter movies, we get something like this. Now I see that each child in doesn't have a key prop. So let's do that uh, first of all, so that we could get the rid of that error. And that prop is missing right here on the small element. So key is just going to be actor.id. Save it, go to the browser, refresh it and uh, the warning has disappeared. Okay, so our filters are going to go here. This is the list of our movies. Remember, we only have few, uh, five movies. As you can see, we're displaying titles, genres, and actors. Now, since we are going to be filtering our movies by genres and by actors, we need to get all of the actors and all of the genres inside of this page because we want to display them in our filters or in our select boxes. So first of all, I'm just going to change this const data to be const movies data. So movies data. Uh, next, I'm going to do pretty much the same thing right uh, like here, but I'm just going to get all of the actors. So res actors and actors data. And uh, I'm going to do the same thing for genres. So we are going to go to the genre route and get all of the genres that we have for our movies. So res genres, we are accessing the genres endpoint and then we are getting the data for those genres. And then uh, we are going to send movies data as movies and actors is going to be actors data and we also want to uh, and we also want to send genres of course we need to define them in our props right here so actors and genres okay now we want to get all of those actors and genres inside of select boxes we installed uh, react uh, select so we are going to call it from react select. So I'm just going to do import select from react select. And now we have access to this select component and select components work kind of like this. So first of all, you just do select and then you want to define the options that you are getting. So options for our select is going to be, uh, this one is going to be for actors. So I'm just going to say actors. Okay, the next one uh, is going to be instance ID. Since we are going to have two select boxes, we need to define instance ID for them. And we are just going to call it actors. Next, uh, since we are going to have multiple actors that, that we can select for this filter, uh, we are going to set this to be is multi. You can of course read more about react select on their documentation page. Uh, then we also want to have a placeholder and the placeholder is just going to be filtered by actors. Okay. And that's about it for now. Let's just see if this works. Actually, it's not going to work right away because we have two more things to set up. So I'm going to show you that. So if I go to my browser right now, 
as you can see, I have filter by actors, but if I click right here, I get the actors, actually, as you can see, I can select from them and they appear right here, but they're not showing anything. They're not showing anything because uh, the default for this is not showing our first name and last name of the actors. So we need to define that option label. So we are going to go uh, and set get option label. And the option label is going to be option. And we are going to and we are going to use template string for this. So we are going to say option. So remember option is just one actor. And uh, if we go to our browser right here and do actors. So this is our this is our actor, Robert De Niro, for example, and it has a first name and the last name. So we want to show that inside of our select box. So we go right here and do option first name, and then we want to access another variable option last name. Okay. Now we also want to filter our options or our actors by ID. So when we send this to Strapi, we want to uh, define an ID of an actor and then get those movies. So we are going to set this to be get option value. And the option value is going to be option is going to be option dot ID. Okay, great. Now, uh, how does this work? So first of all, I'm just going to add an on change handler right here on change. And then I'm just going to set it to be something like if somebody clicks on this or changes this, then we just want to set the values, ju just want to send the values to a function called handle actors. And we want to send those values inside of that function. So I'm going to say values and just send them here. Okay, so we are going to create so const handle actors is just going to be a function that is going to receive values and we are going to cons log them out just so you can see what is going on right here. So we do cons log values. Okay, great. So if I save this and now go to my browser, we go to next movies, refresh this. And if I go filter by actors, as you can see, now we are getting the actors right here. And if I click on Robert De Niro, we get an array with that value, right? With that whole movie, actually. So if I do another dude, so let's select Leonardo DiCaprio, then we get this, right? So this is actually now sending all of our movies right here. Uh, we don't actually want to do that, but we just want to send the IDs of those movies. So how do we do that? So I'm going to go to my code editor again and here in handle actors, I'm going to actually map the values. So values is going to be map and we are just going to say actor, actor ID, that ID. Okay. And what this is doing is just creating another array. And in that array, we are just sending the ID of the actual movie. We are not sending the whole movie. So if I save this, go to my browser, refresh it again. Let's now select Robert De Niro. And as you can see, I just get an array with one. So he's an actor with an ID of one. If I select Michael Nyquist, I get one five. Let me make this bigger and so on. So now you can see that we have access to the IDs of those actors. And this is important for us because if we go to movies, movies, and then we do actors ID equals three, we are going to get all of the movies that have actors with an ID of three. So you do actors that ID equals three and we get inception. And as you can see, we have Leonardo DiCaprio in that movie. And also I set it, uh, set Leonardo DiCaprio to also be in Big Lebowski, although he doesn't act in that movie. So you can see him right here. 
So Strapi provides you with a very nice API to filter your data. So we are going to use that API to filter our movies. Great. So we need to do the same thing for genres. Now I'm just going to add a BR tag right here and I'm going to paste in the select box for genres. So we are getting uh, option that title for our label, option ID for our option value. Uh, options are going to be genres, which we are getting right here. And uh, we are going to have a placeholder of, of filter by genre. As you can see, we don't have is multi right here because uh, every movie can have only one genre. That's how we set up our strappy backend. So I'm not going to change that. Uh, you can see how you deal with multiple filters in uh, this box right here. Uh, and for this, I'm going to also do on change and I'm just going to send the value to the handle handle genre uh, function, which is going to be pretty much the same as this one. I'm just going to say value. And if I save this, go to the browser. Now we have two select boxes, refresh it. Let's check it out. So we have sci-fi comedy crime. If I click sci-fi, I get ID of one. For comedy, I get ID of two and so on. Uh, also, you see that we are getting all of the genres. So we need to do pretty much the same thing uh, like we did right here uh, for our actors. And uh, we are actually just want to send the value ID instead of the whole value. So if I go here, refresh this. Now, if I click on sci-fi, I just get one. If I click on comedy, I get two and so on. Okay, great. Now this works, our filters, actually our select boxes work, but we now need to connect them to our backend. And when somebody clicks on an actor, we wanna filter these movies by that actor. Also the same thing goes for genres. And we are actually going to do the genres first because they are a little bit easier because they have just one option, as you can see right here. They, they are not going to have an array of options uh, that we can filter through. So now to be able to filter this, we are going to be using React Query, as I said at the beginning of this video. So we are going to import use query hook and use query client. You need use query client defined right here. So you just do uh, const query client and we are going to use query client. Okay, so next thing uh, that we want to do is we want to uh, set up our use query hook. So you do const data and status. So use query hook is going to return the data for you and it's also going to return the status of that data. We are going to be talking about this in a little bit. So you're just going to use query hook you can define your key, which is going to be movies, movies, and then you want to define the function that is going to get your data. So our function is going to be called get movies. And also one more thing that we want to define, which you won't use in every case, but in our case we will, because as you can see right here in get server side probes, we are already getting the movies. So it wouldn't be advisable for us to get the movies again on the client side. So to get around that, uh, you have something called initial data and we are going to set the initial data to be movies. So once our component mounts, it's not going to get, go and fetch our movies for us again. Uh, because we already fetched them uh, inside get server side props, but it's just going to use this, these movies right here to display something on the page. And as you can see, we are now calling our movies data, not movies. So we need to change something here. So right here where we are mapping our movies, we are wanna say data instead of movies and everything else stays the same. Okay. So now uh, I can't save this just yet because as you can see, we still don't have this get movies function. And get movies function is just a simple async function that is going to get our movies. And we are just going to copy it from right here. So I just, I'm just going to copy this, define our function. 
So as you can see, it's an asynchronous function. Then I'm just going to say count stress await fetch movies. Uh, we also need to define our API URL. I'm going to define it right here so that we have access to it. And now instead of this right here, we just want to re return res.json. So this is our get movies function. Okay, let's see how this works right now. So if I save this, go to my browser, refresh it, everything is cool right here. So everything works. This is because we are getting our initial data first of all from our server and then we are displaying it with this initial data right here. But what if we didn't use this? So what if I deleted this and I actually wanted to get the movies from the client side first of all and display them, right? So as you can see, we are using data as a variable, not movies. So if I save this, go to my browser, refresh it, as you can see, we are going to get an error. Now we are getting this error because while this component is mounting, we still don't have our movies. We still didn't get them. So we need to do something right here, right? So what we wanna do, because we have this status variable, uh, we can check if that status variable has a value of success. And if it does, then we wanna display our movies. So you do status. If status is equal to success, then go and map our movies. Okay, so let's save this, go to our browser and try this again. Now we are getting our movies from the client side. So if you refresh it again, we are not getting it from the server side, but from the client side. And uh, what we also want to do right here, we just want to add two more checks for the status and you can do them li like this. So we want to check if the status is loading, then you want to just show I'm loading your movies. And if the status is error, then we want to show something went wrong before we display all of our movies or even not display them if we get an error. So if I save this and go right here, so all of this is done by React Query. If I go right here and change this to be just mo movie, movie without the S. So uh, now this should not work. So if I save this, go to our browser, refresh it. Now, as you can see, we are loading the movies, loading the movies, loading the movies, wait for it, wait for it and something went wrong. So what happened right here? So React Query works in a way which you can configure. It doesn't have to work like this, but this, this is the default of React Query. It, uh, it's going to tr retry to connect to your API. So what happened right here is it's retried, I think three or four times. So it goes to our API, tries to get the movies. It doesn't get them. Uh, so we get the message loading the movies. It goes one more time and then one more time. Then the fourth time when it doesn't get it, it just says something went wrong because we got an error. So as you can see right out of the box, React Query can provide you with nice way of showing, showing the errors or loading or whatever you like. Okay, so let's fix, fix this and make it be like it used to. So we want to get the initial data. Initial data is movies and now everything should work fine. Okay, so now we are getting our movies. However, our filters still don't work. We are going to get to that right away. Okay, so now let's finally filter our movies by genres and how do we filter them uh, through our API? So you just go to movies, uh, question mark, genre, as you can see, we have genres right here. And if I do genre ID is equal to three, I will get all the movies that have genre with the ID of three. So that's Goodfellas and Fight Club, right? Okay, so we need to send that to our API. Now we are going to go to our code editor and we are going to send using React query, our query key. 
So first of all, we are not going to leave this as a string, but we are going to wrap it inside of an array. And this is going to be our query key, which is going to be sent to this get movies function. And in that query key, I'm going to uh, define an object, which is going to be called genre, and it's going to receive genre ID, genre ID. Okay, so uh, to receive it, once we change something in our select boxes, I'm going to uh, first of all import use state because we are going to be needing a bit of state right here and then i'm going to above this so above use query that is very important define that a uh, use state so it's going to be const and we are going to call it genre id and the function for that is going to be called set genre id and that is going to be equal to use state and the genre id is going to be by default null. So what we wanna do now, once somebody selects something from this genre box, we don't wanna use this handle genre. Uh, I use that just to show you what we are getting from this, but I actually just wanna uh, use set genre ID, and I wanna send the value that ID to it. And then our state in our component is going to change. So the genre ID is not going to be null anymore, but it's going to be some number of the genre we selected. Actually, the ID of the genre we selected. Okay, great. So how does this work? So first of all, we need to access to our key inside of our get movies function. And to take a look at the key, we can just console log it out. Key, save this. And now if we go to the browser, refresh it, as you can see, we get the query key right away. And the query key currently has parameters of movies uh, and genre of null. But if I change this to be something like comedy, now, as you can see, we get movies, but the genre is two. Great. So what can we do with this? Well, First of all, I'm going to access that genre and I'm going to create const genre ID right here. And I'm going to do key, a query key. We are going to get the second item in an array. As you can see, the first one is movies and the second is this object of genre. And then I'm going to do that genre. And now if we can log this out, save it, refresh it again. If I change this, as you can see, we get the key right here. Great, so now we are getting the key, actually ID of our genre. Uh, I I'm pretty new to React Query myself, so I'm not uh, sure if you can access these keys, these query keys in some different uh, and a little bit better way, but this is going to work for us. So what I wanna do now is I'm going to delete this and add an if statement, which is going to just check. So if there are any genres, it's just going to check if we have genre ID. So you may not have it. If you are just filtering actors, you may not have genre IDs. So I'm just going to do genre ID. So if we have genre ID, then I just wanna return something like this, right? So when something changes down here in our component, it's going to go to get movies. It's going to check if there is a genre ID. And if it is, then we are going to go to movies, genre ID dot genre ID. So we are sending the ID of the genre right here. And then we are returning that JSON. Uh, since we are returning it here, this part of code below our if statement is not going to run anymore. So if I save this, and now if we go to the browser, as you can see, this already works. So let's refresh it again. So if I choose movies by comedy, I get comedy movies. If I choose sci-fi movies, I get sci-fi movies. If I choose crime, I get crime movies. And uh, 
now when I do this again, this is actually loading through cache. It's not fetching our movies again. Okay, so this was uh, for our genres. Now let's take care of the actors. As you will see, actors are a bit more complicated because you can select multiple actors right here. But as you will see, it is not that hard to do. So now for the actors, we want to do something similar uh, that we did for genres. We are also going to use state here. So we are going to get actors IDs since we are getting an array with IDs. Uh, and we are going to use state, which is by default going to be empty array. Here we are going to define actors to be actors IDs. Okay. So we are going to define this and we are going to send that to our function inside of our query key. Uh, and down here, we don't want to use handle actors because as I said before, I just use that to show you what we are getting. And we are going to actually be using the function that we defined inside of our use state, which is going to be set actors. And then you don't need handle actors and handle gen genre right here anymore. You can remove them. So now we are sending gen genre IDs and actors to our get movies function. Okay. Uh, and to see that this works, let's just go to the browser. And if I do something like Jeff Bridges and Leonardo DiCaprio, if we go to our query keys, you can see that now we have actors and actors have an array uh, with two items in it, which are two and three. Great. So we are getting the IDs of the actors. So how do we actually filter movies with multiple actors? Well, very simply, you just do actors ID is equal to three. Let's do something like this. So uh, you do actors ID is equal to three and actors ID is equal to eight. So it's going to give you all of the movies that have either of these actors in it. So as you can see, this one has an actor with uh, ID of three and also with an ID of eight. And this one is j just has the actors uh, with the ID of three, which is Leonardo DiCaprio. So this is how this works. So what we need to do here is we need to create this string, something like this, which, but uh, we are going to replace this hard coded IDs three and eight uh, with the IDs that we are getting from our select boxes. So how do we do that? Well, we just go to our code editor and right here, uh, we can do something like actors ID. IDs is going to be key, query key. Uh, we are getting the third item in our array and we are getting the actors object. So if I console log this out, save it, go to the browser, refresh it. So I do. Okay. So something went wrong. Actors ID is not defined. I screwed something up. So actors IDs not the actor's ID. Okay. Refresh it again. Try it out. Okay. So Jeff Bridges. Great. 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 So as you can see, we are getting this array. Now, of course, just sending this array won't work. We need to create a string for that array. So how do we do that? Well, we are just going to actually create another array. So I'm just going to do map right here. So remember when using map, this is going to create a, a new array from this array that we are getting. And we are going to use the ID to create with template variables, something like actors dot ID is equal to ID. Okay. Now, if we save this, go to the browser, see what we are getting. Sorry that I'm going to sl maybe slow through this, but I just want to give you the full picture of, of what is going on right here. So now if I go Robert De Niro, as you can see, then I get a string which says actors.id is equal to one. Then I can choose 
few more actors, right? Like this. So now I get an array which says actress.id248. Great. Now we need to concatenate that array into a, just a long string that is going to say actors.id equals 2 and actors.id equals 4 and actors.id equals 8. Uh, so that we can send that uh, to our API. So how do we do that? Well, actually pretty easy. Uh, you just do something like this. So you do actors query string is equal to actor IDs. So this is our array that we created just now with map. Uh, and we want to join everything inside of that array. And between it, we want to add this ampersand sign. So if I console log this out, actor square string. Now, if I save this, refresh it, we are doing this for the millionth time. Uh, if I do something like this, and then if I do something like this, as you can see, now we are getting this string right here. Actors ID is equal to two and actors dot ID is equal to three. And if I add some more actors, then we are going to get the string that we need so that we can query our API. Great. Now, all that is left to do is ju we just need to check if the actors query string exists. And if it does, uh, then we want to send that query string to our API to filter our movies by actors. And to do that, you just do something like this. I'm not going to type it all out. So we are checking if actors query string exists, then we want to go to the movies and send that actors query string. And then we want to return this JSON. Save it. Go right here. And as you can see, this already works, but I'm going to refresh it again. Choose the movie, for example, with Michael Nyquist, and we get nothing because we don't have movies with Ni Michael Nyquist. If I remove this, I'm going to choose someone else, let's say Leonardo DiCaprio, so we get two movies. Uh, we get, okay, Jeff Bridges, Keanu Reeves, come on, they're all acting in the same movies. Uh, Campbell Scott, so we get Ghostbusters, uh, Brad Pitt, so we get Fight Club, and so on, right? And now all that is left to do uh, is to cover the case when we are getting genres and also actors, which is going to be super simple because we already handled genre IDs and actors query string. So now if we want to query actors and genres, uh, we have to do this first. So we want to check if genres and actors query string exists. Then we want to await and fetch movies. Genre ID is going to be genre ID that we're getting from here. And then actors query string. And that's about it. So if I save this, uh, go to the browser. Now I can query the actors. So Robert De Niro, uh, Campbell Scott, and let's say Brad Pitt. Now you have crime, crime comedy. Now if I wanna also uh, filter the movies by ID, by genre, so I can do something like crime, and then we will have only crime movies uh, or comedy, then we will only have Ghostbusters. If I choose sci-fi, we will get nothing. And that's about it. So there is just one more thing uh, to handle, and that is, as you can see, we don't have this X uh, in this select box. So I can reset this box, but I can still uh, reset this box right here. And we will quickly fix that. So you just go to the select box and add is clearable, is clearable, save it. And now if we go to our browser, as you can see, I get the X right here. So if I click it, I'm going to get an error. And this error is because we don't have any value right here. So we just go to our code editor and here we check if the value exists. If it does, then we want to send the value ID. If it doesn't, then we just want to send null. And that's about it. So if I save this, uh, go to the browser, now refresh it again, choose some actors, Jeff Bridges, Brad Pitt. So choose crime. And now if I want to reset the genres, I just click here, it works. Uh, if we want to reset everything, also click here, and now our list is reset. 
Okay, guys, so this has been it uh, for this episode. Uh, my advice to you would be to use React where, wherever you can. It's going to make your application so much more performant so that you don't have to do all of those checks, caching and everything by hand. You can just use React Query for that. And also, if you want to know more about React Query, definitely check out the documentation, of course. And also check out the videos, video series by Net Ninja. He explains all of this in a little bit more depth. So anyway, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.